Hi, Christ Central family. My name is Jian King, and I've been attending CCSC for a little over two years after I married my husband, Charles King. It was my husband's church, but we decided to stay after we got married because I felt that God was speaking to me through the messages and worship almost every week. I was very blessed to join a loving small group right away, which was led by Andrew and Michelle Wing. Everyone in the group was so patient and kind that I was able to open up and share freely. My mom was fighting st stage four lung cancer at the time. She was diagnosed in 2015, and it had already spread to many parts of her body, including her brain and bones, which caused a lot of pain. It was too late for any surgeries, so she started radiation and chemo treatments to keep her cancer cells from spreading more. Even though there were many side effects to these treatments, and none of these could completely heal my mom, my family and I were still thankful that she was able to receive those treatments. I still remember the time when I came home to see my mom bald. She said she was losing a lot of hair, so she decided to shave her head. I had to put on a fake smile in order to comfort her and encourage her by saying, it doesn't look too bad, when inside I was very shocked to see her so weakened. I thought about all the emotions uh, she probably felt while shaving her head, and it really broke my heart. However, my mom acted as if nothing had changed and proceeded to prepare a meal for our family. She had always been the sacrificial one in our family, as well as a strong prayer warrior whom I admire so much. She never ceased to pray for, pray and intercede for others during this time. She would open up her hymnal and sing all the hymns um, that she knew from beginning to end. And she meditated on the word day and night. By God's grace, my mom was able to attend and witness both my brothers and my weddings in 2018. However, towards the end of 2018, my mom was constantly feeling bloated, and we later found out it was from fluid building up in her stomach. In the beginning of 2019, my mom's oncologist told us that the cancer had been spreading more, which meant that the chemo medicine was no longer working, and we were told that she only had a few more months to live. After hearing the devastating news, my family and I tried to figure out what was best for my mom. The doctors recommended hospice since she was too weak to receive any surgeries and she will be able to have faster access to treatments that will help ease her pain. After explaining everything to my mom, she eventually told us she wanted to stay home and receive hospice care since that's where she felt most comfortable. There were many complications with her insurance and the hospital that often caused problems and frustrations. But I knew that at the end of the day, everything was in God's hands. However, that faith quickly turned into bitterness once God, who is sovereign and all-powerful, was not healing my mom as I wanted him to. My mom's condition quickly worsened day by day, and it was the hardest thing to see a person I loved die slowly and painfully. She eventually couldn't eat or drink, see or talk, nor breathe without the ventilator. After saying our last goodbyes and thanking her for being the best mom I could ever ask for, my mom passed away on Mother's Day last year. After her funeral, I tried to spend more time with my family, went to church, read the Bible, and prayed. But it was evident that God, I was doubting God's love and goodness. I felt like God didn't prove his love for me by letting my mom die, that, die in that way. I would cry for days, asking God why he would let that happen to her. But I couldn't feel his presence nor hear his voice. After so many tries, I pushed aside the bitterness I had towards God and acted as if everything was okay. Several months later, my husband and I joined Dinko and Priscilla's newly married small group. And knowing my situation, Priscilla, along with my nursery director, Michelle Yang, suggested the grief share group that CCSC was providing. Because of COVID, I really didn't have anything else to do, so I said, why not? It was a 13-week commitment, and we had to watch a 40-minute uh, video 
with outdated CG effects every week, um, but committing to the grief share group was one of the best decisions I made this year. Ever since the first meeting, we were able to cry together and share our pains, hurts, as well as the precious memories of our loved ones. The videos included interviews with the people who had lost their loved ones, and they went over every phase of my grief for the past year. I felt like my feelings were validated, but at the same time, our meetings always helped me to go back to God's word and his promises. Because I was constantly reminded of God's character and his love for us, I started to trust in him based on what he said and not on my feelings. Also, given the time to talk about my mom and my grief so openly and freely, God slowly started to heal me in ways I didn't expect. I didn't know how powerful it was to just share my pain with the people who understood exactly how I was feeling. As the other members simply nodded or even cried with me, I knew that I wasn't alone in this journey and that somehow God was going to get us through it all. During one of our meetings, I shared that God had promised me that he would be a good shepherd to me right before I found out about my mom's cancer. And one of the members in the group encouraged me by reminding me of the fathers of our faith in the Old Testament. God gave them dreams, promises, and assurances right before they went through hardships. She encouraged me by saying that she thinks God gave me the promise to be my good shepherd, to show me he would be there lovingly guiding me through the difficulty and the heartache to come. I still hold this dear to my heart, and this is just a glimpse of what God has done in my life through the Grief Share group. We've become a family who can laugh and cry all at the same time, and I hope they know that I'm so thankful for them, and I'm still praying for them. I still have not graduated from my grief, and I definitely don't have all the answers to my whys. Even now, I constantly go back and forth from sobbing to feeling hopeful. One thing that has changed, though, is that even when I feel unsteady, I know that I have an anchor whom I can hold on to. I hang on to the promise that he will never leave me nor forsake me, even in my pain and grief, and that I don't have to have all the answers. My sorrow is very real, but I know that I can hope for more than what I see or feel. My hope is in Jesus, and it anchors me to know that he has already proven his love for me on the cross, and nothing and no one can change that. I can rest in the promise and hope of eternal life with him, along with all the believers, including my mom. I'm so thankful for all the people that God has placed in my life to help me get through this journey. And I hope and pray that I can do the same for others. Thank you.